Season's greetings. Thanks for joining us for this December edition of Local Image. The holidays are here and that means many of us will be enjoying the sights, sounds and tastes of this special time of year. We'll bring you some holiday delights throughout today's show, including a tasty trip inside a local bakery that is so busy, even Santa and his workshop elves would be impressed. Typical day, we, uh, we have the first bakers start to come in about uh, uh, three to four o'clock in the morning. We take orders up until noon, and then we have to get that stuff made, cooled, sliced, bagged, packaged, and delivered by six o'clock in the morning. So it's a uh, real just-in-time uh, type operation. It's, uh, it's really quite a symphony uh, when you get right down to it. come from a big Italian family so uh, grandma was always cooking and uh, uh, the bakery and pastries was always a big part of every meal. I have uh, very fond memories of that. It was in 1978 when we started and uh, it was a lot like times are right now. It was, hard, it was hard to find a job. I had just graduated from the U of M and I was looking for work for almost two years and uh, my dad and I had always talked, we thought it would be fun to have a family business. Well, my dad was looking for something to invest in and I was looking for work. So we found this boarded up bakery, donut shop, and we figured that would be a terrific uh, family business. How are you guys coming on the cookies? As a part of that, there were a lot of nights that we ate cold cereal right. as a family, just because there wasn't much money coming in and it, times were tough. And back then there were a lot of experienced, older, bakeries, uh, Germans and Swedes that were very willing to teach you their craft. And I was very open to it. it. It meant survival for me. So I got a great education. And in 1989, I uh, took the test to become a certified master baker. There's 138 in the United States. And uh, I passed. And it was all because of these old timers teaching me this dying craft. And uh, for me, it was just a matter of I needed to learn these things to produce the products that we needed to produce to survive. We have about 100 employees, a little over 100 employees. Uh, most everything is from scratch, uh, a lot of hand work. It's real old school. Uh, and the more old school we do it, the better the results. Uh, we're trying to turn the clock back in time. Uh, years ago, but when I was younger, in the, uh, the mid-60s, bread used to come wrapped in uh, wax paper. And then the, the big innovation in the early part of the 60s was a plastic bag. I am trying to find a machine that will wrap bread in the uh, wax paper again. I've looked everywhere. I've got feelers out all over the country to, to find an old abandoned machine. And then I'm trying to find somebody to make the wax paper for us. I would love to be able to offer a loaf of bread wrapped in wax paper, the way it was done in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. It's an old, very old profession, and the more we go back to those roots and use simpler ingredients and these simple techniques, uh, the better tasting the stuff is. I get to do a little bit of everything. So I have, um, I have done everything in the bakery, and as general manager, depending on where they need me, is where I go. A temperature, a pull something out 30 seconds too early can make all the difference in a raw product or a fully baked product. You have got to have a very good eye and, and really care about the product you're putting out. And if you don't care enough to let it take that one extra rotation, you know, or that extra five minutes to proof, you're going to end up with a product that's not acceptable. It's, it's always something different. It's always something um, creative and fun. and. Um, um, I like cookies. I like all of our cookies. They're, they're really good at brownies. I like everything. I have a horrible sweet tooth. Um, and it's not a good place to work if you have a sweet tooth because you get to try everything and it's, it's, it's all good. So everyone in my family expects me to bring quite a variety of pastries and cakes and things like that. And 
I do. <laughs> Treat yourself, it's the holidays. Uh, try some of this stuff that you haven't tried for a while. It's really delicious stuff and some really fun flavors too. I really enjoyed our visit to Grandma's Bakery and it really was like Santa's workshop, only better because we got to eat what these elves were making. You know, it is okay to indulge a little bit and enjoy the taste of the holidays as long as you stay active and work off some of those calories. And this next local image segment shares one great way to stay fit and have fun, especially if you're over 50. We have our adult skaters who come and skate with us once a week from 9.30 to 11.30 on Thursdays. And they're a great group of people who have skated together for years. And we feel strongly about the synergy between um, what we have going on here and the students who attend Century. So we have their um, nursing students who are going to graduate next May coming out to do blood pressure screenings. We're going to track your group over the next two hours. Okay. So we got uh, previous blood pressures from mm -hmm. quite a few of the skaters already. And it, you know, at your option, of course, nobody's required to do anything. You can come back every half hour or so. We'll see how your blood pressure is reacting to the exercise throughout the day. Okay, so. sounds good. All right, great. That was a good reading, Lorena. Thank you. What is it? 118 over 72. So it's good, yeah. So far I've done three blood pressures and they've all been average, they've been lower. And in the past I've done seniors and they've been pretty high. So it's cool to compare how active the seniors are and how it affects their blood pressure. Uh, yeah, perfect exercise, it's clean. Um, you can dance with the girls and you can't beat that. I wish I could skate like that. Raise my blood pressure. <laughs> Did it go up? <laughs> no, but let's just say it's stable. <laughs> I'm not a couch person. I'm always active. But all of the people that are in this group are. Yeah, it's pretty normal. For I'm me. not surprised because you've been active for 50 years, so we can show the statistics to future patients on how living an active lifestyle and eating right can affect their blood pressure. We need to have a seminar on what happens when your upper number goes up or down. The comorbidities that come from blood pressure is, uh, or from high blood pressures are so severe that it's really worth just this little bit of exercise mm -hmm. and medication, anything you can do to keep it maintained so you can promote long and healthy quality of life. Ultimately, I would love to see this program grow. I, I hate exercising, so I like exercising with people. I mean, they are a group that has such a great time together, but you know what? There are a lot of other skaters out there that I would love to um, have joined at the Vanna Sports Center in this group. One of our gals here, Linda, is a figure skating coach. She said it's for your soul, it's for your heart, it's for your health, it's for everything. And that's really the way we are because nobody here appears to be their age. I and mean, that's why we come here, to laugh our heads off. <laughs> so he's teaching you the language. <laughs> What a great group, and they really do want more people to join in the fun, so dig out those skates and get yourself to the Vanis Heights Sports Center for some fun and fitness on the ice. And as you heard in that story, a little music can make all the difference in how we enjoy life. And for my studio guest, 
Music has meant all the difference as a form of therapy for fellow recovering war veterans. I'm so happy to have back once again our friend, singer, songwriter, musician, and Iraq war veteran, Matthew Griswold. Welcome, Matthew. Happy Thank holidays. You. you too. Happy holidays. It's Judy. great to have you back. I know you've been extremely busy, and we want to talk a lot about this therapy, yeah. music therapy you're involved with. You were in Atlanta speaking in November. Tell us yep. what that's all about. I, I just got back from... Uh, Atlanta, where I spoke and performed at the American Music Therapy Association's National Convention. And uh, what, what I did is, is similar to some of the stuff that I do here locally, which is uh, explain to them as therapists, as licensed therapists uh, who use music. Uh, and mostly, traditionally, they use the music for, for more ne neurological uh, things with autism and dementia. Okay. Um, what I did was I, I went down and I spoke to them about um, the use of music directly uh, dealing with the, the, the body's reactions to PTSD and mm -hmm. certain triggers that come with that. And so with, with some of the things that we found in just the last few years uh, in, in the psychology world is that the triggers are something that, that we need to address. They're not something that we avoid, which maybe there was kind of a misconception for a long time about that. And so now that we know that these are something that, that we need to address, um, I have personally found in, in working with other music therapists uh, the huge uh, advantage that music can have when, when learning to deal with these, with these triggers. Yeah. And so it's such an amazing thing, but it's not something that's being used you know, across the board and it's not, not something yet. that's, yes. And so that's kind of the idea is to get out and, and you, you get one target market, which is the actual therapist. And you got to explain to them this this does work and, and something to use. And, and a lot of them were excited about that right. after this convention. And, of course, then there's the other side of it, too, which is uh, mostly what I do here locally, which is go out and actually talk to veterans okay. and say this is this is an opportunity. And, and maybe maybe we could all use this to, right. to our benefit. Well, and you obviously have benefited from your own involvement with music. Um, having served in Iraq, um, talk a little bit about... You know, how did you know that music was making a difference for you personally? Um, it wasn't something that I knew right away. Right. It wasn't something that, that just jumped out at me. Um, it was kind of something that, that started in Iraq when, when I was uh, overseas, when I was in Ramadi uh, specifically. And uh, with the things going on around me, I really started to use music as, as a place to, to kind of make sense of things. And... Um, and I think sometimes it comes across as if like I was venting or, or something, but it was more than that. It was yeah. really more of a place to find my own identity, a place to, to kind of remind me of who I was mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the things that were important to me. And so as I was doing that, even in Iraq and coming home, um, there, there were struggles that I hit. There were times where it was like, wow, this is a, a big change for me. Um, I had things that, that were still kind of lingering from the war that maybe I didn't want to address right, right. away. And, and there is sort of a trust thing, you know. You're you're kind of, in a in a vulnerable place, and it is hard to to necess it, it is harder to reach out and trust um, other people, right? You know, in, right. in a, a situation like that. But music was something I could trust. Music was something that I could lean on. And and as I was playing and performing and writing, I really realized what was going on right. inside of me. What was going on when I was dealing with the triggers. And because of that, I was able to kind of springboard into a, a much healthier state of mind and state of well-being. Right. And they're still there. You yeah. know, I mean, you're still, you're still dealing with them, but you're dealing with them in a healthy way. Right. And right. responding in a much better and way. And not just avoiding those triggers, right. which is kind of the traditional thought. That's the, that's the kind of the misconception. Yeah. Is just stay away from them, and they'll stay away from you, and that's not true. They're, they're around every corner. You know? Yeah. So with working with veterans now, um, is it... Is it something where they, they can just be enjoying the music, or is it better if they're actually playing and participating, or what, how does it work? It's uh, kind of a mix of all that stuff. Uh, there's a lot of different techniques in the music therapy world um, that, that a, a music therapist, a licensed music, music therapist, could ramble on for hours about. Yeah. But uh, with my little exposure to it, I do know that uh, one of the, the biggest things used is um, uh, the conversation, you, just listening to songs and uh, I think they call it lyr lyrical analysis. And mm -hmm. it's something where it's not even necessarily the person performing music, but just listening okay. and taking it in and, and, and feeling the, the things that certain words or even certain notes sort of uh, stimulate. And 
Uh, other things too uh, is is kind of the use of, of percussion. Even I mean, everybody has the ability to mm -hmm. to hit a drum or or something. You don't even have to sing or play a note. But uh, there's a lot of neurological and psychological benefit to even just focusing on a rhythm and Very focusing cool. on that pounding sound. And yeah. so it is a mix of, of of people performing and being a part of the music, or or also just taking it in and, and listening. And what are you hearing from those that you've been working with so far? Overall, it has been um, amazing to see how Good. how one how easy it is for for us to to do that for for us to take part in that. Uh, but the the outcome of it and the things that that are happening is is probably arguably. Um, some of the, the best things happening in that world of, of recovery and transition. Well, you have found yourself in a really good place with this. I mean, obviously you're so talented as a musician, oh, singer, songwriter, and now you're able to use that to help others. How does that make you feel on a day-to-day -day basis? I feel, it feels great. It really does. It feels great to, um, to be able to provide something um, through, through this art that, that I've, I've grown to love throughout my whole life and to be able to provide something so personal and, and so uh, uh, intimate. And it's also great to know that you're out there performing your music on a regular basis. We just talked before we started taping that you you are at Manitou Station White Bear Lake once a month. Once a so month, that's yeah. awesome. You have also some holiday music that you are participating. It was something you did in previous years, mm -hmm. and this is another version. Tell us briefly about that. Holiday Lights Volume 3 is a compilation of all uh, local Minnesota musicians, uh, just very talented acts, great musicians that come together and put a holiday track on a compilation that, that's used for four local charities. And it's sold at all Kowalski's markets uh, all throughout town. And you are going to grace us with a song that you perform. Um, Do You Hear What I Do Hear, hear one of I my hear. favorite songs all right. of all time. Awesome. It is the holidays. We wish you a great holiday season and well, continued you. success with all you're doing as a musician and what you're doing with our veterans. That's so awesome. We always love to visit with you, Matthew. That's I love being on the show. So the night wind to the little lamp Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamp Do you see what I see? A star, a star Shining in the night With a tail as big as a kite With a tail as big as a kite Shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? A song, a song, high above the trees, with a voice as big as a sea, with a voice as big as a sea. in the cold let us bring him silver and gold let us bring him silver and gold so the king to the people everywhere listen to what I say pray for peace people everywhere Listen to what I say A child, a child Sleeping in the night He will bring us goodness and light He will bring us goodness and light He will bring us goodness and light He will bring us goodness and light
Our final segment for this holiday edition of Local Image takes you to a very busy local intersection that has been capturing the eye and filling the hearts of passerbys for many years now. It's a Christmas tradition open to all faiths, all ages, and all kinds. And that, of course, includes a llama. Hi, guys. You guys want to pet the animals? They're very friendly. I am the drama director of the Fools for Christ Drama Group, who puts on this event and uh, we do several things throughout the year in our church and in other churches in the community our group does. Um, this is our signature event for the community, for the drama group and for the church, St. Stephen. In a second, we'll go across, we'll bow and we get halfway. We'll step up and kneel on the blue mat, hold your gift up. We had uh, who, what was then a young man named Bill Cranich here. He came to me with the idea of this, this living nativity. Next thing I know, he comes up with the costumes, and the costumes that you see out there on the nativity right now are the same costumes that he uh, made 20 years ago. That first year we were outside without animals. We had just a, a styrofoam set, and it was very rudimentary, but it was very, very cool, and no one in the community had ever seen anything like it. And, Along the way, we've, we've grown to be more, you know, more, more user-friendly with our stage and our bigger animal area. We have uh, four 45-minute shifts of actors to make a three-hour show each night. You can see the scene two, two ways. You can drive by with your car, either on County Road e or in our driveway that goes right in front of the scene. We have lots of people who drive through, stay in their car, witness the scene that way or you can park in the church parking lot, get out of your car and walk back up to the scene and witness it in person. But the scene is as a repeating, a repeating simple program. It's very interactive. It's in, encouraged the audience and people who stop by to come up to the scene, uh, walk right up to the baby Jesus if they want to, uh, pet the animals, talk to the actors. Uh, it's less of a less of a pageant and more of an interactive, interactive experience. You're welcome to go on stage and see the baby if you want. It's up, it's up to you guys. We have had uh, live babies uh, play the role of Jesus. And I remember this one little girl coming up into the scene and she's looking and, and she's just telling her mom that this is just a doll, this is all fake and everything. And all of a sudden this uh, baby Jesus that we had was a small infant and it made a noise and made some movement and she was just flabbergasted and astounded and she says, it's real mom, it's real. So that's what really uh, makes, you, makes us really a labor of love every year. We want to let people know that the church is a place you can go uh, just to be accepted as you are. And, and in doing that, it's not this congregation, we represent every church in the area. Uh, we just happen to be blessed by being in this location where we have so much traffic going by. We get people from all over the metro last year. I had people from, from Crystal, from Blaine, from Minnetonka, from Lakeville, who come from all over to see our event. And it's usually non-stop visitors from the time we open up at 5.30 each night to 8.30 when we're done. The animals are very, very significant to our presentation. It sort of brings in a lot of kids and a lot of families to our event. Basically a free, free petting zoo. They're from a company in Hugo called Down on the Farm, and they've been doing it with us since our second year. So since 1994, Down on the Farm has been supplying the animals. One year we had the llama took off, and we had to chase him down to the corner to catch him and bring him back again. I walked outside and I saw this uh, kid, uh, or this llama dragging this kid across the intersection of White Bear and County Road E. And I was just going, wow, that's pretty amazing. I don't think the animal's supposed to be over there. And the vision that I had was that, that some poor motorist would get involved in this and have to tell his insurance company uh, that he was making a claim because he had been struck by a llama dragging a shepherd. And uh, fortunately, fortunately, for whatever reason, uh, the light was red on the corner and the llama stopped, so uh, it was a law-abiding llama. We're very happy about that. The most important thing is to see the community come together and to see the families come up to the scene and to see the kids so excited to be able to pet the animals or to walk up to the scene and be a part of the scene and not be told, no, you can't go on the stage, we're performing now. No, 
Come on up and be a part of the scene. Be a, pet the animals. Come on inside and, and uh, have some treats. Do, do a craft. There's, there's activities for everyone. And just the, the reaction of the kids and the families is really, really why I keep doing it. What we really would like to share is, is how human the people who were in the nativity were. Uh, that, that if you were there, uh, even though we were, were, were really culturally separated from Jesus and his family, uh, they were Jews living in that time, in that place, in a whole different culture. But if we were there, uh, we could go up and speak to him. We could touch the animals. Uh, we could hear Mary's cries of pain as she gave birth. Uh, these aren't just simply Christmas card characters. They are real, living human beings. And I think if anyone gets that feeling, uh, then, then what we do out front there is successful. And if anybody comes in here uh, and, 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 and feels a little better about themselves and feels like the world uh, has other people that are willing to share the ride with them, uh, then this, this in here has been successful. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for stopping. And a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all of you from all of us here at On Location TV and Local Image. Please join us again next month for our annual look back at some of our favorite stories from 2011. And be sure to send us your comments and story ideas for the new year ahead. Until then, I'm Judy Skyboss, and I do thank you for watching Local Image.